Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. You know, one of the most exciting days for a new CNC buyer is the day the machine actually arrives to the shop. I wanted to do a video to show you how to go from the truck to having the machine installed, ready to make your first part. Now, when the machine arrives, it could be in a van or it could be on a flatbed trailer. It depends on how big the machine is. If it's in a van, it'll actually be on a pallet, so it makes it easy to get the machine in and out. If it's on a flatbed, there won't be a pallet required. In either case, the machines will always be covered with this shrink wrap. Let's get this project started. Well, the plastic's off the machine, and for the first time, I actually get to see it. It's just beautiful. But before you get too excited, let's do a walk around and make sure that there's not any shipping damage that, that we couldn't see when it was packaged in the plastic. Now, in the rare occurrence that you might have some type of shipping damage, here's how you handle that. Number one, don't sign the bill of lading until you've inspected and made sure everything's okay. If there is any problem, be sure and document it on that bill of lading. Take photographs and contact Shop Saber CNC within 24 hours. Now, I'm going to actually walk around the machine and look a little bit closer, and I'll be right back. I finished my inspection. Everything looked really, really good. Now, the next step is to remove some of the accessories I purchased from my machine from the table. Things like my F4 vacuum, my rolling control stand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these straps. We're going to take these parts and put them over on the floor out of the way, and I'll be right back with you. Well, I've got everything removed from the table. Now, I kept this one box out where I could get to it because it has the owner's manual in it and the adjustable levelers. So what I'll do is I'll take those out, I'll set them on the table, and I'll be right back with you. By the way, all the steps I've been following are also included in the owner's manual. It's a great quick reference. Now, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to remove the machine from the pallet, but before we do that, we have to remove four bolts, one in each corner, that secures the machine to the pallet. All right, once we have that done and the machine's in the air, we'll actually attach the leg levelers, and that, then the machine's ready to be spotted in the shop where you actually want to operate the machine. Now, let me start taking those bolts out, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, now we've got the machine spotted, the table's level. We level in both X and Y with this standard level. Now, because this has an ATC spindle, we actually have a balancing cylinder. By the way, that cylinder was in that original box that we showed earlier. Now, we'll, we'll mount that to the machine. Then there's one other thing that we need to do. One of the reasons we have such good luck shipping these machines is that we lock the axis down with shipping bolts so they can't move around if they're going down the highway. I'm gonna take those bolts out then we're ready to power the machine up. Well, we've completed the mechanical portion of the installation. Now let's focus on utilities. 
and on this machine, it has options that require compressed air, so we'll have to hook the compressed air up. Now, what we do here is we basically use a quick connect that works with everything in our shop. You may or may not want to do that. The main thing, if, if your machine requires air, this is a quarter inch NPT thread, so you'll have to make sure that all your fittings work with that. All right, now, the next part of utilities are electricity. What you see here is actually uh, the power feed for the VFD, which controls the spindle. What you'll probably want to do is have your electrician hook that up. Then the other part of electricity is actually a 220 single phase plug. All right, now, I'm going to go have the electrician do that, and we'll be right back, and we'll hook the machine control up. Okay, the electrician's finished. It took him about 10 minutes to hook the machine up. We have air hooked up. The last thing we need to do is to attach the machine control. Now, I actually purchased the rolling control stand because I wanted all my control stuff inside of that. So we're going to put the control components in here. When I come back, we're going to be ready to turn this machine on and move it around. Everything you saw me do today is actually listed step by step in the manual that comes with your Shop Saber CNC router. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a really great time producing this. I wanted to show you how easy it is to install one of these machines. Now, that doesn't happen by random chance. It starts with the philosophy of the company. It has to do with engineering. It has to do with innovation. It has to do with being an American manufacturer. It has to do with how we test machines prior to shipment. It has to do how we package machines. So when they arrive at your shop, they're basically plug and play. Now there's another aspect of this installation, and that has to do with on-site installation which we offer, but it's rarely taken up because our install is so simple. Some companies still in the router business require you to pay for a couple of days for a technician to come out and do what I just did in two hours. Well, if I can do it in two hours and I save $2,500, I made $1,250 an hour for a couple of hours. I would much rather spend that on my CNC projects than I had on a technician who's basically on a shop saver so gonna watch me run the machine for a couple of days. Now, speaking of the machine, I'm, I'm really excited about getting this machine running, and I think I'm going to make something with it. If you have any further questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Saber Nation.